middle-aged man. A slightly forced smile appears on his bony face when he sees you. Good day, good day. Guns of all kinds for your pleasure. Uh, perusal and pleasure. Pre-war and hot off the workbench. Rifles, shotguns, and pistols from the best guns within the waist. All my weapons are of the highest quality. If it explodes in your hands, you get your money back. Guaranteed. I'd like to ask you some questions. The trader seems a bit underwhelmed, but maintains a smile in case you might still buy something. Listen in. How's business? Yeah, you must know that everyone in the waste needs weapons. They're invaluable. How far are you gonna make it running around with a shiv? I will make it very far with just shiv. I'll tell you. As far as the nearest tavern, where the peasants will bash your skull in with shovels, and the nearest ditch, where the wild dogs will finish you off. How does one avoid such a sad fate, you may be inclined to ask? By purchasing a quality firearm. But may I, where might one purchase an item of such quality, you might inquire? Why, right here, of course. Feel free to check my math on that one. And there's something else. Uh, tell me about yourself. Was there a hotel? Before I came to this village, I worked in a large city to the south. Krasnoznamini. Life is really bustling there. Like a real regional capital. When I got tired of the city life, I came here for some fresh air, and that's that. The inner regret in his voice. There's clearly something he's not telling you. I see. Uh, was life in the village? All hopes and dreams. No, seriously, there's a great potential in this place. What it needs is a real workforce and proper building materials. You know, there used to be a huge metal working plant and a coal refinery nearby. The area had a real industry. Many progress are brought to a halt by local crime bosses. The, village are, the villages are a different problem. Apathetic, though nice enough, they dig in the dirt all day long but never stop to look at the stars. There's no commerce in their veins. Any good rumors? One of my relatives is a caravan driver. He works everywhere from the Red Parzan era to the Khrushchev Badlands. Well, he told me that there's about this abandoned town plagued by strange anomalies. Anyone staying there overnight will have a terrible nightmare. Worse, green lights can be seen flickering on the top floors of all the buildings, and people hear voices. That's not even the scariest part. He told me his caravan had a boy and its crew, Marvin. One day Marvin comes up to my relative and says his pal is calling him from a nearby basement, because he found some pre-war tin stashed down there. The relative gave the kid the okay and then forgot about it. The kid never came back. Some men from the crew went down to the basement the kid was talking about and all they found was a fresh pool of blood. The man who the boy thought was calling him hadn't even been near the place. I believe the hell spawns to live in that city now. I would say it's a home to visitors from the stars. I think the story is a great example of why you should buy a gun. <laughs> suspicious end to suspicious tale, a better go. No, okay. What do you got? So, I don't even think I have money. Uh, and I can sell this. What does he even have? He has a rusty knife with a chance to break. Why would I buy something that could break? I'll end up buying it. And it's just gonna crunch in my hands. He did say if the weapon explodes in my hand, I get my money back, but I don't believe him. Oh, nails. Nice. Ow! cast pearls before swine. Ah. This is the tree they're talking about, I assume. The only tree in town that I see. Nice tree you got. Alright. You are the drugman. I'm gonna save my game. He's a thin, slightly stoop, but otherwise well-built middle-aged man. He's dressed in a dusty lab coat with his sleeves rolled up and a gray cloth hat. He is? Must be the local doctor. Bullseye, young man. Dr. Mikoyan at your service, but you may call me Constantine. I want to ask you some questions. Young man, I'm a doctor, not some criminal to be interrogated. But you must ask, ask away. Is he wearing a chef's hat? Why not? Let him wear what he wants to wear. That was the job. Tense, how'd you like that reply? Tense? 
Very much so. I have no idea what to expect from one day to the next. My choices are to stop doing the job altogether or simply keep trying to cope. New strains of radiation poisoning, spontaneous mutations, untreatable infections. Some damn stitching up bite marks made by jaws never seen by a physician in pre-war times. Sometimes a patient arrives to put all my years of medical expertise into question just by the way he looks. Or rather, how by the mushrooms growing out of his back looks. Life of a communist doctor sounds pretty harsh, Doc. Uh, 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 uh. Heard the new rumors. Young hey, man, I'm a, I'm a doctor, not the village gossip. But I do hear some strange rumors from time to time. For example, I heard that the tavern proprietor adds toadstools to some of the spirits. I've never touched stuff myself, and I highly recommend you do likewise, young man. Back to this witch's brew might be unpredictable. Okay, don't drink the bar stuff. Just don't. Okay. Tell me about yourself. It's nice to listen to someone smart from time to time. One of the original residents of this place. I've been here ever since the collapse. Nothing else special about my biography, though. And thank God for that. A very concise duck. Good for you. <laughs> Alright. I'm never gonna get a barter 50. Yeah, no. My barter? 23. Ain't happening. My... Stealth. Pretty low, so I don't think I can steal very well from them. What is even the buttons for stuff? Okay, there's no sneak buttons. I assume stealth is just chance to be detected. Time of day. Flash. Hungry? Oh, yes. Yes, I am. Stole their stuff. Aha! Log. Several logs, in fact. I think I need logs for stuff, anyways. Let's see. Something needed logs. I could make a shiv. I'd lose a brick. You know what? That's fine. The shiv's good. Can't make a bag. Can't make a respirator. Brass knuckles? I need some metal scraps for that. A shield. A rough, ugly wooden shield. It looks like shit, but it may be useful during combat. Lowers my dodge, though, but gives me damage threshold. Your attack's accuracy decreases. No. Crossbow. Okay, no. Equipment. Nice. Shiv. Put brick in my other hand. Stab. Alright, I can stab now. I happen to know this is a part of a quest. Uh, so let's touch that later. Because I've done that before. Fires. Ooh. What do we got here? Corn! An alarm clock. Let's take it all. Save my game. Herbal mix. Can I steal it? Healing from the people. We'll never know I'm stealing from them. I am master thief. Gobble. Got a melee with that? Yes. Fuck is this? This is a game called Atom RPG that I bought ages ago for like no nothing because it was super cheap. It was on sale like way back. Can mail it with this? Actually gives me sequence. Equip the shovel. And here. All right. An old man in a skull cap does what he always does. He opens and closes his toothless mouth, whistling some forgotten melody. Upon seeing you, he squints his eyes at you. Hello, Sonny. You want to speak about something? 
it's getting to know the locals. Oh, the locals, there I am, a local through and through. <laughs> you said you'd help me out, Sonny? But really, what do you want? I shaved my ass, Sonny. I was a little corn patch at the back of my house. I picked a corn myself, but I'm just as old now. The back is killing me. What harvest could I pick like that? The old man gives a, a sad sigh. It must be very hard for him to ask someone for help. Fine, old man. I'm gonna do it. See you later. Quest log has been updated. Need to harvest the crops. And all right, crop harvesting. I will harvest your crop, good sir. Amazing crop harvesting skills. I have harvested the crops. Did you see my skills? Yes. Here is any what news you bring? I picked your corn, old man. Oh, a real worker you are. You really helped out an old man. The old guy feels his pockets, looks his house over, and finally turns to you with despair in his eyes. It's just I don't have any money to pay you. What a shame. I was a hunter back before, you know. I always had the monies. But now, what a shame. Shame on you, old man. Acting like a true exploiter. Maybe you could look around some more, old man. Every little bit helps. The old man does not listen to you. Finally, a smile comes to his face, and then he slaps his forehead. What an old fool I am, Sonny. I was a hunter, wasn't I? I did it myself, but I didn't get it. It is, honey. The old man gets on his knees and starts searching under his rickety bed. Finally, pulls out his old shotgun. With a smile, he hands it to you. Here, don't really need it no more. This is scary to the crows, I suppose. I find it useful. There you go. Oh, thanks a lot, old man. It's just what I needed. Take the gun out of the old man's hand and look over it with interest. It's an old hunting carbine. On its wooden stocks and engraving, a heart pierced by an arrow. Old hunting rifle. Uh, this requires skills in uh, ranged, which I do not have. So that is probably getting sold. <laughs> Unless I get like a companion that can use guns, I guess. Uh, I sure as shit can't. Okay, more tape. Ooh. Here's the game. Can I? This. Yes, I can. Well, before you stands an aging man with an old rifle in his wrinkled hands. He looks at you with mostly concealed interests. Can I ask a few questions? Hey there, ask away and I'll try to get you some answers. What are you guarding? The village treasury. We keep the taxes we gather here and use them for the common good. And if you got any fun ideas, my friend, I don't recommend trying them out. I might be old, but I'm a great shot. I mean you no harm. Can I ask something else? Tell me about yourself. So there to tell, I'm a simple man. The one thing that makes me special is my aim. I can hit a radioactive spider in the eye socket from 200 paces. That's right. I don't like to brag, you know, but for many years now, I won the local top marksman's contest. Good for you, my man. Can you spare some more time? I would. Who's new around the village? Ah, all's well. With our head, there's no time to be lazy or sad. He's a great man, and I believe in him. Our whole village believed in him, and his faith will keep us all together. Everything is fine. It's fine. Okay, can I have something else? What are the new rumors? There's plenty of monsters seen in the south and north. Giant spiders, wasps, and even more dangerous things. Some even settled near the village. I don't know where they can breed. If they can, we're in trouble. Dangerous situation. Alright. What about you? Before you stands an old man in an old battered but clean jacket. He looks around 60, but hale and hardy for someone living in the wastes. Osmond's real age is closer to 70. His strict face is graced with a brush like a mustache. What do you need, comrade? Can I ask you a few questions? I am very busy. Please speak with someone else. Okay. Fine. 
I want your frying pan, though. No reason why. I, it's just a frying pan, and I want it. Where are you saying as a 50-year-old man? His rigid posture and his prideful expression contrast slightly with his shifty eyes. He became a small-time government official before the war. Comrade, comrade, might you be here to fix our water tower? What was wrong with it? The engine doesn't work and our mechanic disappeared somewhere, probably out drinking. Okay, I'll take a look. It is great, and the proletariat will be forever grateful for your humble cooperation. The water tower is nearby. Please check it out, and I believe you'll be able to help us, comrade. I am truly humbled in knowing that the people will never forget my act, but a simple thank you is nothing I can put into my wallet. Man quickly combs his balding half of his fingers and gives you a hard look. Getting rich on the misery of simple people is nothing to feel proud of, but if you are that concerned about compensation, I will indeed pay you after the deed is done, out of our village budget. Of course, that means we will have to go without supplies for months, children will go sleep hungry, and the parents will need to think of excuses to explain to them why there was no supper, or they won't put in breakfast on the next day. The risk of dying from thirst is much more grave. You're trying to make me feel bad, you big phony. I'll take a look at the engine. Alright. Here's the engine. Pair. Do I got skills? Not that time. Try a few times. Hey! I done did it. Uh. I have a canteen. And I have a bottle. And I have an empty bottle. I'm gonna keep an empty bottle though, because I think I need to use one for the bag. Yeah. Ah. With a respirator. Okay. The 50 year old man constantly looks around and is searching for someone. Upon noticing you, he snaps his fingers as if getting a sudden idea. Oh, comrade, so goes the engine repair. I fixed it, the deed is done. Oh, really, comrade, I can't believe it. It's true that some in this world, warped by war and anger, had the strength and morality to lend a hand to a struggling community? It was a pleasure, really. Now, this is refreshing, comrade. Not many people these days get satisfaction by simply helping others and feeling the euphoric rush of good, hard labor. Thank you very much. Great. All I got was XP. But, fuck it, I need XP, so. Where he stands a stocky, powerful man, ranged around 30. He has a plump face, an upturned nose, and an impudent look in his eyes. He's wearing a workman's slacks and a tight t-shirt with the word ROWING printed on the front in faded, sunburnt letters. Are there, can I ask you some questions? Oh, hey, pal, my intel's your intel. Any rumors? Rumors, huh? I don't even know. Well, one dude told me that some enthusiasts made an actual movie somewhere out there. Yeah, the first movie in 20 years. It's probably trash, but still it'll be more interesting to watch. The tickets don't cost a thousand each, that is. Which is probable, if you think about it. It's new around the village. The commune lives just fine. Not great, but it could be worse. Though actually, I don't really care. I squat around here and sometimes drink in the tavern, and that's it. Sometimes I also try to woo Katya, which is pretty natural, eh? The village itself don't bother me much. Real fun is Krasnozamini. Uh, There's gambling, there are good drinks, and the women are not shy at all, if you get my drift. Gives you a racy smile and claps you on the shoulder. Half of the women in that city are probably raising my kids nowadays. How do you like that? Oh, you. Can I ask you something else? How about yourself? Uh, I'm a hunter, comrade, investigator. It's not illegal, right? <laughs> I love it. Fresh air, a faithful rifle in your hands, the smell of a campfire in the steppe. Romantic, eh? And it pays well, too. You hitting on me? Scared. There's life out here. It's okay, no reason to be sad anyway. <laughs> How are you? It's okay, I guess. What's up? The biz is not what it used to be? It happens. Faith's a cold bitch, after all. It can end you swiftly. I know it from experience. I better go. Alright. Well, let's check this building. 
Oh, good. There's person sleeping. Maybe I can steal their shit. Radio transmitter. Cassette. The production of company cassettes in the USSR began in the early 1960s in Tallinn. Ooh. Fun. I wanted to put it in. Oh well. Okay, can I... A respirator. Yes! I look like a fucking idiot now. But hey, we're wearing a mask. Wear your masks, people. Don't get the... the AIDS. Uh, okay. Before he stands, a plump, red-faced man of around 25 with a neatly trimmed beard. He's wearing a white shirt with some rather short shorts. In his hands, there's a clean towel he uses to swat annoying flies. When seeing you, the man gives you a wide smile. Oh, a customer, welcome to the tavern. You travelers sure keep on coming. What do you mean? Well, you're here right now. Not long ago, an armed band came through the village. People with guns usually mean trouble in these parts, but they were nice and civil, just like real army men. Well, could you tell me more? Not much to tell. They weren't chatty. Her village had wanted to speak with them about some issue, but they just left, so I don't think he was able to strike any kind of deal. We talked to our gate guard more than anyone else. His name's Yan, if you want to know more. You should just speak to him anyway. Do you like a drink or something to eat? We had some questions. Pleasure, ask away. Bring the good gossip. There's the rumor going around that somewhere in the waste there's a vault of some sort, and people still live inside it. But pretty well, too. Said they sent expeditions into the waste sometimes to look for people or tech to develop some sciencey doodads that'll improve everyone's lives. They're all, bet their whole operation is very secretive because if people knew where to find them, they might try to attack or rob their base. With the interest, tell me something else. The old timer said that before the war, some secret experiments were done in this area. Very secret. Taking place in hidden labs, staffed by scientists. God only knows what they studied in there. Just have one question. If those labs are so secret, how come there are rumors about them? Now that's a question I'd like to see answered. Pretty interesting. Tell me something else. I heard that in a small town far from here, there lived a former po policeman named Maxim Maximovich Rakityansky. He had a family, a wife, and a son. Everything was okay for them for a while, but then a band of bikers started harassing the town. That is a Mad Max reference? I'm guessing. They even killed Maxim's family, and his fury took the best Volga car from the police station and killed every single biker in the gang. Now, Maxim, the warrior, wandered the country roads for all alone with no meaning in his life. Sad story. That is most definitely a Mad Max reference. With the interesting, tell me something else. Are you in a small town far from me? They live the for Oh, that's the same one. A lonesome drifter shared a story with me once. I said there was this courier got attacked by some bandits in the desert. Got his goods stolen and a bullet cleaned through his skull. But he survived even after being buried alive by those thugs. The locals dug him out and got him on his feet again. And you know what happens next? Dad of Pank and his rescuers and healing up. The weirdo grabs a gun, puts on a cowboy hat, and starts looking for the thugs and shot him. Bought New Vegas. Nice reference. They say the courier fought valiantly, but to no avail. His corpse is probably lying in a ditch somewhere. What did he expect? A simple courier is no Rambo. How could one person take on a whole gang of violent criminals? That's, no, that's a nice fallout reference there. Probably destiny to get shot by those bandits. They didn't do their job right the first time, but they sure did the second. Uh, You know, this new life we all have doesn't just affect us people. It's the animals pretty hard, too. I heard that in the village not far from here, some boys uncovered a car in the woods, started chucking rocks at the windows, and later set it on fire. Right after they did, a huge bear came out of the woods. The boys started running, but instead of chasing them, that bear climbed inside the burning car and burned to crisp along with it. That's weird. Uh... Last spring, I got a visit from a real bizarre guy. He was dressed in grass skirt and a jacket made from raw animal hides, and his nose was pierced with a huge bone. 
using gestures and growls, he explains to me that he came down far from the way mountains, and in those mountains there's a whole tribe of people just like him. They live like prehistoric ape men. They never trade, they eat what they hunt and grow, and last but not least, they keep away from civilized folk. Later he said they chose him to go out in the world to find the little gardener gardening kit for the needs of a tribal agriculture. <laughs> Fallout 2 reference. That's funny. Don't really know why they need that kit. It was a really cheap Soviet toy set with a broken shovel and a bent hoe. Maybe it was interesting in the seeds that came with the toy, but they must all be rotten by now. Anyway, most people have some sort of mental breakdown from time to time. Who might have questioned it? Yan simply pointed the travel in a random direction and then he left. Good luck to him on his quest, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's a good fall too reference. Sometimes I get a customer who works, uh, what do they call it? Stalkers! Yes! They share the weirdest rumor, like the one about some oasis place where any wound can be healed instantly. Stalker, uh, uh, call it Pripyat. Reference. I don't believe that nonsense, but it's interesting to hear the stories if that place really existed. Wow, imagine how many good people we could have saved. There's a lot of nice references in here. Okay, is that all of them? One drunken traveler, pretty shady character by the way, once told me that in Krasnos Navity City, the banditry is so secure in their position the crime bosses give out special thief passports to their underlings. Like their work permit or something. Okay, anything else? Mad Max reference. Secret things. People say that before the war there were no mushrooms around these parts. Apparently the climate was too dry, but after the war, the climate seemed to be the same, but the mushrooms are growing everywhere. Maybe they lied about not having so many mushrooms before. Or maybe it's old lady radiation playing her weird tricks on us. God only knows, friend. God only knows. Okay, anything else? I think we've gone through most things. He's looping a lot now. There's a rumor that in Central Asia there's a city that once stood on the shore, but now that the water has receded, the whole region became a desert. And that's not the worst part. They say a pack of wolves started attacking the place, eating everyone. Most people of those lands hired a few hunters to destroy the pack. When the men reached the city, they found out wolves, only stray dogs that turned strange somehow. They craved human flesh as if to take revenge on us humans. Terrible story that. God, there's a... There's a lot of references in here. Have we done all of them now? I think so. Okay. That's that's good. I like that. That was life out here. I was laugh. The people reason civil is for the living itself. We don't suffer from hunger and excess excitement. To some it sounds boring, but I really like it. Actually only changed one thing about this place. When they, we inherited this dining hall, I started calling it a tavern instead. It's a great word, tavern. Kind of cozy, right? The old name was labor down and all, food for workers. Those words are from the old world, and me and Katya, we never saw that much of it. What the innovator you are. Tell me about yourself. There to tell. Me and Katya, we're the locals, we don't go out too much. But that doesn't bother me. I like it here. Working as a bartender. That's my job. Catches using her accounting skills to keep the establishment from falling apart. See, even now she's sitting over there with her documents, totally ignoring the world around her. That's okay, what will you do without her accounting? I don't even want to think about the job I'd have then. Did you like working around here? Uh, not too bad, great even. Yeah, it's pretty great. Such a simple job, but well respected by the people, for obvious reasons. There's a party of some sort, any kind of celebration, a burial, or simply a day off your job. Who's there to pour you a glass of your favorite poison? Me, that's who. That's why I'm so well liked by everyone. Barkeep smiles warmly and pats himself on the belly. And there's money in it too, yes sir. Me and my sis were like, what do they call in the West? Entrepreneurs. Well, she's much more entrepreneurial than me because she does all the paperwork, but still. But you fund your calling. Uh, 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 there's a rumor going around somewhere in the way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hold on, friend. Maybe you'd like to hear a little business proposal first. Okay, let's hear it. It's a, sim it's a simple matter. Small job, really. What I need for you to bring me this book I ordered. It's all the way over in Krasnos Navani. Abraham, the bookseller, has it at store. Can't go get it myself because of my responsibilities at the bar. 
I can see that you travel a lot, so if you ever find yourself in Crescent Examining, maybe you could pick it up for me. If you do, I'll be sure to compensate you for your trouble. It's a deal. If I ever get to Crescent Examining, I'll visit these Abrams. What is this book about? There was this writer named Tolkien who lived in England, which was a country way back before the war, and he... Well, he kind of wrote fairy tales for adults. You know, I should probably call it science fiction, or maybe not. I'm not good with genres. Doesn't matter, the book's about another world. Anywho, I always loved reading, especially if it's about something extraordinary. Something fantastic. Where there's robots and the rings of Saturn and ancient Greek myths and all this kind of stuff. Then I was told this Abraham and Crescent Examinic to get me this Tolkien's book. And with a special translation too, anyway. I drove into the city and ordered it, but now that it's arrived, I can't find the time to go pick it up. Alright, we gotta pick up the Lord of the Rings. Or maybe it's the Hobbit, who knows. Alright, well yeah, I'll go. I will go pick it up for you. Man looks over your map and marks his head with a cross. Oh, thank you so much. Here's a recipe, rec receipt for the book. Show it to Abrams and I'll give it to you. Bartender hands you a small, thick square of paper. On it, written in a formidable cursive, are the words The owner of this document, Rachenko VA, or his legal proxy, may obtain a copy of The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, translated to Russian by Bobir Eze, after handing over the re receipt signed by Merkin AD. Great! We have to go pick up Lord of the Rings. We read for so long and my mouse fell asleep. Uh, any jobs? Talk to my sister. Okay. That'll go- that I'll, I'll do gladly. Need something done around the house? A light bulb screwed in or a chair fixed, for example? Just give me a call. But say more serious stuff for catch the ears. Yeah. You just think she's pretty busy right now, telling expenses, planning the budget, you know, and then when Catch is busy, it's pretty hard to get her attention. Oh, but I just thought of something. You know what she loves? Making all sorts of potions, tinctures, and spirits. Can't really understand why, but she's quite all into that chemistry stuff. Tell her I sent you to try out her latest tincture. I will get a free drink and also get to chat with her. Sly, huh? Pretty clever, me thinks. Things will go now. Okay. I shouldn't have given that man this voice because this voice is very grating on my throat and I need to go get a drink now. So I'm gonna go get a drink. BRB. Ah, I'm back. I got a bunch of water. I'm also gonna take my pants off. You didn't need to know that, but now you do. This is why, one of the reasons why not doing face cam is, ah, the best. I can not wear pants and you wouldn't even know unless I told you. Here we go. All right, so he told me to go talk to her. Before you sits a young woman. She's in deep concentration, writing in a yellow notebook with the word accounting on the cover. She's completely immersed in this activity. Let me see if I can lower my chair a bit. It's a bit too high. There we go. And does not notice you. Alright. Hello, your brother sent me over. He says you might have a tincture for me to try out. 
Girl stops her calculations and stares at you blankly. After a moment, she blinks, smiles, and tucks her tiny pencil stub behind her right ear. Great, I doubt you'll ever drunk anything quite like it. It's a new recipe. Well, not really new. More like long forgotten. It was intriguing. Can't wait to try it out. Girl nods and shows you to a dim and cold corner of the tavern. From behind the bar, she produces a clay bottle labeled Triple X. Here it is. Drink up. Boldly drink it down. You take a tiny sip. The drink has a strange sour taste. You shrug and hand the bottle back to the girl. You don't feel intoxicated or even nauseous. You feel you should take another sip. You take the bottle back and have another. What can a few more sips do? Now your head begins to spin. Nothing unusual about that, right? You have full sensation in your limbs. Normal. Then you feel them floating around you, as if all the air had suddenly turned to water. Your mouth is very dry, so you wet it with another sip of the tincture. In some distant place, you hear the girl calling to you. Don't do it. No, don't do it. But you already did. The world around you stops. You also stop. But your mind is racing with thoughts which arrive with exceptional clarity and speed. Why are you here? Why am I here? Why did I drink that stuff? Why? The sound of your own musings to you is like the roll of distant thunder. It's growing nearer every second. You suddenly comprehend that that's what you thought the thunder is actually footsteps. From out of a misty void, General Morozov appears before you. Looking for me? He asks. His voice is like a hundred voices in one. You cannot reply. You are frozen. Yeah, you're looking for me. Says Morozov and takes your hand. Let's go. You walk through the dead gray mist together. Morozov in front, you falling behind. General is calm and assured. You have nothing better to do than simply follow him. Finally, the mist parts and a strange, beautiful sight appears. There are mushrooms here. You have arrived in an unreal primordial mushroom forest. Their huge trunks are thicker than the biggest oaks you've ever seen. Their tops spread like a giant umbrella. Giant umbrellas, obscuring the sky. The general continues to lead you onward, weaving his way between the massive mushroom stems. Your tour through the fantastic forest stops suddenly at a truly colossal mushroom, the biggest one of all. This is God, says Morozov. You can't see the general anymore, because he's speaking from within you. He's talking from your head, using your mouth. You are General Morozov. Suddenly the ground beneath your feet begins to shake. You almost lose your balance. It seems like an earthquake. When the shaking stops, you look up and scream for the colossal mushroom now has a human face. Bow, orders the mushroom god, and you fall senseless. Your mind turns off. For how many hours, you do not know. When you finally wake up, you do not feel any of the usual symptoms of heavy drinking from the day before. He's alive. Vasya, he's alive. The girl is holding you up so you don't collapse completely. Your stability is returning as the tincture leaves your system. The bartender is swearing to himself, wipes the sweat from his brow. How are you feeling? That was terrible! What kind of moonshine was that? Sorry, I'm so sorry. That was my latest tincture, but I think I overmixed it. What a fool I am. It is okay. The girl exhales and gives you a smile. You took good care of your stuff while you uh, slept. Check your belongings to discover that you've not been robbed. Miracles are real after all. I don't understand why it turned out so strong. I used my grandfather's recipe as recorded by my grandma. She said, speaking mostly to herself. Anyway, we need to have a talk. Gotta be sure your brain is completely recovered. That's a good idea. Can I ask you some questions? I'm listening. What are you doing? The girl looks tired at her notebook. It's quite old, the grease stain torn on the sides, and covered with dirty fingerprints. Like most things since the war, it's been through a lot. I'm trying to make ends meet, my brother Vasya and I, we own this tavern. He tends the bar, and I do all the math and pay out our taxes to the village head. Business uh, isn't great, though. I also sometimes concoct new beverages for our customers. Sometimes I make it from old recipes, some I create myself. We distill it and sell it right here. I love that particular job, but I can't be a brewer bro. Ah! Oh, there's a missing C. <laughs> taking R, it's supposed to be care. Can't be a brew without taking care of the bookkeeping and taxes, so here I am. And we'll get to get on that stuff. I'm looking for work. Can you point me towards any opportunities? Everyone's looking for work around here, so I'm afraid I myself can't help. But I could uh, put in a word for you with the comrade Kovalev, our village head. He always has a work to be done. Though I won't do business with someone he's never seen before, and I recommending a stranger is kind of unprofessional. Maybe you help me with some chores first. I feel better giving you an introduction. You need help with. I'm ashamed to ask, but I need some toadstools, and I don't have time to go pick in my own. 
Maybe you could help me out. Just five toadstool the toadstools will do. They grow on the other side of the fence, not far from here. What do you think? Yeah, I do not have the 70 speech crack. Never happening, so let's just go get them. We'll get you your mushrooms. Thanks, I'll be waiting. You see a muscular man near the bar. He eats mince meat out of a can and washes it down with vodka. His face looks familiar to you. Yes, of course, it's another Adam cadet you knew before being sent on a rescue mission after Lost Expedition. You were never friends, but you still recognize him. His name is Alexander. Pretend you didn't recognize him. You pretend you didn't notice him and try to leave, but the sudden, but the big guy suddenly turns to you and squints a little and finally waves at you. Wow, hey, Grook! What, you didn't notice me? I must be a master of camouflage. Speak quietly, no one needs to hear us. You throw a quick glance at the sleepy barkeep and the girl at one of the tables. Both either pretend to not give a damn about your conversation with Alexander, or really don't care about it. Despite that, Alexander quickly nods to you and starts speaking quietly. It's good that you keep to yourself. People around here are savage. Better not let them know who we are. Low lives like these will cut you up in the blink of an eye. You also looking for Morozov and the others? I'm doing the same thing. You were sent before me, though. You stumbled upon this village not long ago. So how is life in the ways treating you? Not are you my mother? Don't answer. I can see you're not her. Life is okay. Well, it's not like they say in my native Georgia. A sweet peach, but it's still okay. <laughs> Suddenly remember that neither Alexander nor his family are from Georgia. Would you politely decide to keep your mouth shut about it? <laughs> A terrible name. Thank you, CJ. I'm just too concerned about the lost expedition. It's so important to find it. You know, so important. Both for my body and for my soul. Actually investigating the lead right now in this bar. I share some clues with you, but I won't. Get your own clues, Chav. Don't call me a Chav, you fucking asshole. All right. Uh, what do you think about this place? It's okay. Too many holes in the ceiling and the walls. But you know me, Chav. I'm a man of nature. I'm one with the forest. I don't need nothing. Just some food and some wind protection. That lady over there. Alexander nods in the direction of the girl who writes something down in a notebook, which has the word accounting on the cover. She does not notice you looking. Go Katja could have been more into me, you know. I'm the only person here that's not a fucking mutant. A former Marine, great for breathing with, and yet she doesn't look at me. Gratitude for what I did for this country way back in Afghanistan. You suddenly remember that Alexander never served in the Marine Corps, never fought in Afghanistan, and actually got his blue beret from a passing trader a few years ago. But you politely decide to keep your mouth shut about it. <laughs> how's, the invest how's the investigation going? Well, I'm calculating things, yeah, looking for clues all around. Almost found our lost guys. When I save them, I'm getting out of this place, cause look at that guy over there. Very cautiously eyes the barkeep and lowers his voice. Check out his meaty eyebrows. A real life mutant is what he is. A monster shaped into human form. Most of the villagers are like that. Ugly fellas, inbred and dumb. Thank God, me and you, we have integrity. We will never tell anyone like that the location of our secret organization, which is located right here on the map. Let me just show you. Alexander waits until the barkeep turns his back on him and then shakes his fist at him while making an angry face. Did anything interesting? Start attending to my muscles as of late. Doing some bodybuilding and all. I doubt a shrimp like you would find that interesting now. Bitch, I'm strong as shit. Yeah, why would you need to stay handsome? You're too much of a material man. I think strength is only needed to intimidate people and force locks. But to me, to me, you know, to me, strength is beauty. The hidden beauty that makes girls around you blush and drop their pants down. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Alexander shows off his muscles to you. They're quite large. And his hands look like industrial chimneys. You didn't learn anything of importance? Well, how should I put this chap? Once I went to the woods, maybe I drank some liquor before doing so. Maybe I didn't drink anything, but anyway, suddenly I heard the baby cry. Well, well, you know, the real deal. You know what I did? Nothing, I just went my own way, because I obviously wasn't a real baby, just some vile mutant pretending to be one. And even if it was a mutant, what am I supposed to do with an infant? Eat it? Not my cup of tea, my man. Maybe in the next life, I guess. I'll tell you one thing, if you're a baby crying in the middle of the wilderness, just keep on walking. You should eat it. You had your shot. You didn't eat it. I leveled. Ah, oh, hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am not doing good right now. Okay. 
let's get... I want more melee weapons, to be honest. Uh, want survival. And I want my technology to be good. Let's get melee weapons up. I wonder if throwing would be good. Probably. I kind of want speech. It'll be funny. A lot of good dialogue so far. But I kind of want stealth as well. Get that. Now. Yeah, I have one point and everything costs two. Martial arts and melee weapons. That sounds like something I want. Plus one dodge for every action point spent, so I get ten dodge around. Damn. <clears throat> wow. Every time she has to stun. When you get half HP, you get two additional AP. 50% to base damage and melee. Wow. First hit in a battle, guaranteed crit. The New York Norm combat technique costs 7 action points. 100% chance to cause a crit. Only with bare fists. Falcon punch. Precise jab. Fifteen chance to ignore armor in close quarters. Quarters. Reaction. Now I get two turns in every round of battle. The first with full AP and the second with half. That seems pretty fucking good. 50% more AP. percent XP. Double skill point gain from reading. Plus two skill points of level up. Discount. That seems good. Okay, well, I can't take any of these yet. Did they actually lower my... They did. They fed me. They gave me food. Good. I was actually hungry. Anything else from this guy? Not really. Who's this? The great big man who looks around 50 is standing in front of you. His wide and usual muscular body is clad in a tight coat of leather armor. A spark that cleans battle knives attached to the stranger's belt. It's been sharpened to perfection. An even more impressive battle gun is sticking out of his holster. But perhaps the most intriguing part of the stranger's equipment is a necklace made of human ears. It is reaching lower than the armor spike collars of his armor. Realize that you've been staring at the man for far too long. He notices your gaze and gives you a friendly smile. You hear a snuffling, stuttering, but still a highly cultured voice. It doesn't match his menacing outfit. Good day, comrade. I haven't seen you here before. When at the necklace made of ears. Where did you get this collection from, if you don't mind me asking? The man sighs and glances at the necklace sadly. From the people. From the people. This is the flip side of my current profession. This is quite an unpleasant totem of a necessary one, fortunately. Hmm, this calls for an additional question. G -g Great, it's always a pleasure to talk to a fresh face around here. The man energetically extends his arm for a handshake, but suddenly he jerks it back as if he remembered something horrible. The next second, a tiny crossbow arrow shoots out of his sleeve and pierces the floorboard. With an apologetic look on his face, your inter interlocutor starts mumbling. Oh, what a blunder. I nearly killed my interlo interlocutor. Sorry about that, comrade. I recently stole this device into the sleeve of my jacket. A hidden crossbow of an old automobile spring. You understand? I didn't yet get used to wearing it all the time. Of course, such a hidden weapon helps me work. They can destroy my social life in a single clumsy move. Hopefully I didn't scare you too badly. Ask me questions, my dear. What is your name? The man rewards you with an embarrassed smile. My name is Inokensi Yegnovich. But when inquiring about me at work, just tell any major merchant that you're looking for the educator. What is your name, comrade? 
My name is... <laughs> ah, I can pick! Okay, I could neither say my real name, Grook, or White Buffalo Boris the Crime Fighter, Lycanthrope Va Vavuda the Blood Wizard, or Eugene the Iron Fist, or Agdom. Well, I'm definitely Lycanthrope Vavuda the Blood Wizard. Lycanthrope Vavuda is the Blood Wizard. Well, nice to meet you, Lycanthrope Vavuda the Blood Wizard. <laughs> of course, that is my name. Nice to meet you. There's something else I want to tell you. Or ask you. Tell me about your profession. The man sighs heavily and bitterly and looks at the glass in his hand. The glass seems miniature in comparison. Ah, oh, my dear comrade, a com opportunist is my profession. Once long before all this disarray, I used to be a respectable man. A senior lecturer at the Faculty of Youth Teaching, a professor of Russian language and literature. My adoring students called me Inokenty Yegjevich. I mean, never missed my lessons, especially the ones on the, the early works of Dostoevsky, on the works of Chernyev 